Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brain Bean here again, and today we're talking about the Black Widow. I think no other keyboard in PC gaming history is as iconic as the Razer Black Widow, and it's largely responsible for making a lot of the features that we take for granted in today's keyboards the expected standard. Razer's always been really good at keeping their finger on the pulse of the latest industry trends by pulling the community on social media or reaching out on different forums like Reddit, and this is largely apparent when you look at the evolution of the Black Widow over the years. And that's exactly what we're gonna be doing today. Razer reached out to me and asked me to create a history of the Razer Black Widow. So we're gonna be looking at it from the OG original Black Widow and all the iterations throughout the years, all the way up to the Black Widow V3 Mini Hyperspeed. And it's really cool to see how it's changed and evolved over the years. Now for full transparency's sake, Razer did sponsor this video, but my words have not been edited or limited in any way. So I wanna thank Razer for supporting smaller tech creators like myself. But with that, let's take a look at the legacy of the Razer Black Widow. It all started in 2010 with the original Black Widow and Black Widow Ultimate being released. These were the first ever gaming keyboards to have mechanical switches, which would end up playing a big part in paving the way for mechanical switches to hit the mainstream market. The original Black Widow is certainly a board more reminiscent of the old school gaming keyboards that were big, flashy, and had that over the top gamer aesthetic. I mean, just look at that font. And I think anybody who played PC games in the 2000s is gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. The original Black Widow had a glossy plastic case and a row of dedicated macro keys, and if you can believe it, was not an RGB keyboard. In fact, it had no backlighting on it at all, unless you had the ultimate version, which had blue lighting only. These boards used Cherry MX Blue switches, which had many new mechanical switch users clicking and clacking for the first time. This may very well be why Razer keyboards have always been primarily clicky switches as the main option, as they've created this fan base for clicky switches from the very beginning. Now, shortly after, in 2011, Razer dropped the Black Widow Ultimate Stealth. This was the first non-clicky Black Widow keyboard. It came with Cherry MX Brown switches, providing an option without the click, and also saw them change out the glossy finish with a matte texture, which made the board not show fingerprints as much like the original did. We also got to see their first licensed keyboard release for Dragon Age 2, and Razer would go on to release many more licensed peripherals over the years for games and franchises like Overwatch, Destiny, Star Wars, and a bunch more. A year later, in 2012, Razer also came out with their first TKL Form Factor Tournament Edition keyboard, which has proved to be a popular edition even today. Over time, Razer would release 10 keyless versions of just about every variation of the Black Widow, and seeing as they're just cut down versions of the same full-size keyboard, it'd be a bit redundant to cover them in this video, so we will not be covering them any further. So even over the course of the first year, we see Razer introducing a mechanical gaming keyboard, a second version with a different switch option, as well as changing the case to make it more aesthetically pleasing, and then introducing that 10 keyless tournament edition form factor. Three years later in 2014, Razer put out the Black Widow Chroma, the first ever Razer keyboard with full RGB lighting. Razer wasn't the first company to put out an RGB keyboard, but I would argue that they were the first ones to do it really well. The Black Widow Chroma would ultimately be the catalyst for their now massive collection of Chroma-enabled devices, and while the SDK for in-game integration was just rolling out, this would prove to be a huge feature as more and more games would begin to have their lights on your peripherals changing in real time, reacting while you play. This adds another level of immersion on the top of just plain looking cool. Additionally, with this release, Razer introduced their own clicky green and tactile orange switches. This was a pretty big deal at the time because back then switch options had been all designed with typing in mind, and Razer switches were tuned from the ground up to be more gaming focused, having shorter actuation points and faster reset points, allowing for more rapid keystrokes. Now to be fair, the first generation of Razer switches weren't the most amazing switch on the market, which resulted in the switch getting some scrutiny, but at the time it was a respectable starting point for Razer. This certainly made an impact on the industry as well, as today just about every manufacturer of gaming keyboards does have their own proprietary switch type. Fast forward two years and we have the release of the Black Widow X, which released in 2016 and was actually the first Razer product that I reviewed on my channel. Razer took a different approach with the X going with a more sleek modern floating key design and a metal top plate. The Black Widow X also had a more minimalistic font and dropped the extra macro keys which gave it a more professional look and a smaller footprint. It still had full RGB lighting but removed the white backplate that came with the chroma giving it punchy vibrant characters but not as much ambient light spilling underneath the keys. And I think the Black Widow X is an important release in the history of Razer's keyboards as it showed that Razer's willing to switch up their design and try new things. 
This is also the first time that we saw a mercury white option, and even today, it still looks really nice. And with this release, Razer also made some improvements to their original switches that increased the lifespan to 80 million clicks and added a noticeable improvement to the overall feel with snappier feeling performance. A year later in 2017, we saw the next generation of the Black Widow with the Black Widow Chroma V2. This release was a near complete overhaul of the original Black Widow Chroma that brought lots of new additions and improvements. For example, the Black Widow Chroma V2 was the first Razer board to include a plush padded magnetic wrist rest, which was a very well received addition. It kept the new font introduced with the Black Widow X, and the V2 also brought with it a new switch type, the Razer Yellow Switch, which finally brought a linear switch option to the Black Widow three years after the clicky and tactile versions were the only option. The linear yellow switch brought with them super fast actuations of 1.2 millimeters, a shorter travel of 3.5 millimeters, and a reset point versus actuation of zero millimeters. This faster switch was something I think a lot of people were wanting to see from Razer, and the super smooth performance of these switches didn't disappoint. Later that same year, we got an updated version of the Black Widow Ultimate, which would see another improvement to their switches with the addition of sidewalls, which adds stability to the key presses, greatly reducing key wobble and makes them more dust and spill resistant. And I think this was a really good improvement to their switches. And while this change was first introduced with this Black Widow Ultimate 2017, these switches are currently now rolled out on all Black Widow keyboards. Then in 2018, the Black Widow Elite comes along and adds dedicated media keys and onboard memory and sports a floating key design. The Black Widow Elite is probably my favorite version of the Black Widow as it is the best of both worlds from the Black Widow X and the improvements of the Black Widow V2. It's got this nice minimalistic look of the Black Widow X with the exposed switches and metal top plate. And it also drops the macro keys in favor of those new media keys and digital dial. And the whole thing just looks nice and clean. At the same time, we do get the full RGB wrist rest and switch options of the Black Widow V2. In 2019, Razer created a more grown-up business-oriented version of the Black Widow aimed at productivity rather than gaming. The Black Widow Lite is a clean, simplified version of the Black Widow that comes in either white, black, or their limited edition Stormtrooper version. It's got a similar styling to the Black Widow Elite with the exposed switch design and it's in the 10 keyless form factor. I like that the light has plain white backlighting. I think it looks nice and clean and it comes in their tactile orange switch, which is my personal favorite, but I don't think it gets enough love. These choices were made with the office setting in mind as to not cause distractions to those around you. I think it was a good step towards what would ultimately become the newest 65% Black Widow. And I do like to see Razer trying something new and marketing a keyboard towards not just a strictly gaming environment. And shortly after the light, Razer released an updated version of the Black Widow Chroma, the Black Widow 2019. This was aimed at being a more accessible option that brought things back to basics with the Black Widow, having a very similar design to the plastic case of the original. This edition removed the media keys and wrist rest while keeping the chroma and mechanical switches, thus offering a more budget conscious Black Widow experience. Two years later in 2020, Razer released the Black Widow V3 Pro. The V3 Pro is the first wireless Black Widow keyboard opening up a new degree of freedom for the Black Widow. In addition to being the first wireless Black Widow, the Black Widow V3 Pro is the first Black Widow to have a standard layout, which makes getting aftermarket keycaps easier than before if you want to do some more customization to your keyboard. Additionally, Razer changed the switch housing on this board to be clear, which allows for more light to shine through, which has two benefits. It allows for the light to still broadcast lots of color with the less brightness settings you may have to conserve battery during wireless use and it makes them super bright when plugged in. We also saw another improvement added to the yellow switches in the form of acoustic sound dampeners which reduces the clack at bottom out. And lastly the V3 Pro has much thicker double shot ABS keycaps opposed to the laser etched ABS ones on previous versions of the Black Widow. And the nice thing here is that it makes so that those characters will not rub off over time and does make for a thicker higher quality keycap. Lastly, we've got the newly released Black Widow V3 Mini Hyperspeed. This board takes much of the newer advancements of the V3 Pro and puts it in a small, compact 65% form factor. I really like seeing Razer take the Black Widow to a smaller form factor. It makes it feel more current, and I think this is a nice culmination of everything Razer's been building to up until this point in this keyboard's history. And of course, I wouldn't leave you guys without a sound test. So here is a quick compilation of all these switches back to back so you can hear how they evolved over the years.
So there we have it, a look at the original Black Widow all the way up to the Black Widow V3 now 11 years later. And for me personally, looking through all of these keyboards and rejogging my memory and researching and all that, what's most profound to me and what really sticks out is the constant updates to the switches. After the original Black Widow with blue switches, literally every single release had some new variation or update or tweak to the performance of the switch as Razer is constantly updating and improving them. And I think to their credit, I mean, they don't have to do that. They could have just stuck with one of the designs and been like, these are good enough, let's roll them out. But they're constantly improving it and never settling for good enough, which I think is very commendable. But anyways, guys, that's it for this one. Let me know in the comments down below which one of these Black Widows is your favorite. And of course, if you made it this far into the video, I'd love to see you stick around and subscribe. I've got a lot more videos like this coming for you in the near future. And as always, stay safe out there, take care of each other, and I will see you in the next one.